Happy Friday. Today we're going to be doing some things that are a little bit easier than what we did in the past few days. Um, and it's actually really fun. This is called Factor Trees. So one of the big things we learn about in sixth grade is factors. Um, you've probably heard the term before. We've talked about it in class before. But what we're going to be doing is actually creating a factor tree. And we're going to be able to use that to actually factor numbers. So this lesson is going to be um, back in, I think it's even fourth grade that you start learning about factors. So we're going to be building on that. And then what we're preparing for is something called finding the greatest common factor, which is going to be a huge, huge thing in sixth grade. Okay. So let's unlock the problem. Mr. Shu gives this puzzle to his math students. Write 24 as a product of factors that are prime. Remember that a prime number must be greater than one and can have only one and itself as factors. Okay, so what we can do is we can use a diagram that's called a factor tree to find the factors of numbers. So that's what we're going to do today. Um, just really quick, give an example of a number greater than one that has only one in itself as factors. We all hopefully already know what a prime number is, but you, a prime number can only be divided by one and itself. So... How about two? I can only divide two by one and itself. Another example could be three. I can't divide three by anything other than three and itself. And let's go one more. How about five? I can only divide five by one and itself. Okay, there's an infinite number of prime numbers, so this list could go on and on and on. So here's how we make a factor tree. It's super fun. Okay, so we're doing 24. So what you do is you write the number at the top of your factor tree. So you write 24, okay? And then what you're going to do is you're going to draw these two little lines. The underline is not really supposed to be there. Look, it's not really there. They're just putting it there for you to write it. And you draw these two little lines, okay? And now any two factors that you know of 24, you're going to write there, okay? Now, if you think 12 and 2, you could start with that. But I'm going to do what the worksheet says the first one that pops into most kids' minds is 4 times 6. So we're going to write that, 4 times 6. Now what we do is we're breaking these two numbers up even more. So what we're going to do is we're going to now think of what we could multiply 4 by. So I know the 4 can be found by doing 2 times 2. And I know that 6 can be found by doing 2 times 3. Okay, and now you keep doing this until each number, I'm sorry, each factor is a prime number. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to look here and see, are these all prime? And if they are prime, I can't do any more reducing, then I know that I'm done. So I can't figure anything else out with 2 besides 2 times 1, so that's it. 2, 2, and also 3, and we already identified that they were prime. So what we do is we write the factors that are prime numbers from least to greatest. So they already are in the least to greatest here, so that's good. But we're going to write 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. And that's it. Now what we're going to do is we're going to make a different factor tree for 24 because some numbers have so many different factors that you can do this in different ways. So remember what I said before about 12 times 2, but you could also use 3 times 8. So why don't we do... Let's do 3 times 8 because I like the 3 there. Okay, so here we go. Let's gonna, we're going to see if we end up with the same answer or not. 3 times 8. Now, I'm not going to break the 3 up anymore because it's prime. There's nothing else besides 3 times 1, and we're not going to bother writing that. Okay, so now I'm going to just break up my 8 more. I know that I can do 4 times 2. Okay, and now I'm going to leave the 2 alone because that's prime, but I'm going to break up my 4 further. I'm going to do 4 Oh, not four. Two times two, sorry. Two times two. And now I know that these are all prime. So something that I do personally that they didn't do up here is I circle the numbers once they're prime. And this is going to help you with something in sixth grade that we're going to learn called prime factorization. Okay, so now I do the same thing. I write all my numbers, but I make them from least to greatest. So two times two times two times three. And that's my answer. And as you can see, no matter what kind of a factor tree you make, you're going to get the same answer. So if I broke up my 24 uh, into 12 times 2, I would still arrive 
at this moment, uh, answer. Okay, so is the product of factors the same? Yes, it is. Okay, no matter what, it's going to give you the same. Okay? So this is super fun, right? Okay, let's continue. So for our share and show, we're going to use a factor tree to find the prime number factors that have a product of 210. So they're trying to help you out here with this bigger number. So the 210 is what we're going to be breaking it up into. So they're telling us something times 21 is going to give us 210. So hopefully you can all see we just have to add the zero. That means we're multiplying by 10, right? So we fill this in, 10 times 21, and now we're just going to break it up. I don't really like this whole thing here. I'm just going to do it this way, okay? So I can write 10 as 5 times 2, and I can write 21 as 7 times 3, right? So now, ever alert, remember to continue to factor a number if it has factors other than one in itself. So all they're saying is make sure that you actually really stop when you're supposed to. So like, you don't want to stop at 10 and 21. Remember, you have to always check and make sure you can't divide by other numbers. Here, however, I can't divide 5 by anything else besides 5 and 1. Can't divide 2, can't divide 7, can't divide 3. These are all prime numbers. So now my final answer just has to be written in order from least to greatest. So 2 comes first, times 3, times 5, times 7. And guess what? That's my answer. Okay? I'll just fill in these blanks. I just prefer to do it that way. So five, 10 we said was 5 times 2. 21 we said was 7 times 3. Each factor has only 1 in itself as factors. Now 2 10 is 2 times 3 times 5 times 7. Voila. We're going to do 2, 3, and 4 together, and then you guys are going to do that on your own. So let's use a factor tree to find the prime number factors. So 8. I can divide 8 into 4 times 2. Now, I know 2 is prime, so here's what I do. I circle it, and I stop there. I'm going to break up my 4, though, because I know I can still do 2 times 2. And now, these are all prime. So to write my final answer, they're all the same, so I don't have to worry about least to greatest. I just do 2 times 2 times 2. That's my answer. Super easy, right, guys? Next, 45. You can do any facts that you, any facts that you think of, but I'm going to start with 9 times 5. That's probably the most common one. And I know 5 is prime, so I'm going to circle it. And I'm going to leave it there. But I know 9 is not prime. I can do 3 times 3. And now I have all prime numbers. So I'm just going to write it from least to greatest. 3 times 3 times 5. I have a feeling you guys are going to love this lesson. It's kind of fun, right? <clears throat> okay, now with this big monstrosity, 350. But don't get yourself crazy. Whenever you have something that ends in a 0, the easiest thing is to break it up by 10, right? So we could do 35 times 10. Okay? Try not to make yourself confused. If it ends in a zero, break it up by 10. It's just easier that way. Now, I know I can do, to get 35, I can do 7 times 5. I know 7 is prime and 5 is prime, so I'm not going to break those up. So I circle them. And then 10, I can do 5 times 2. And again, I know that 5 and 2 are prime, so I'm going to leave those. So now we just write it from least to greatest. 2 times 5 times 5 times 7. Isn't that great? Nice and fun. Nice and easy. So you guys pause, please. Try 5 through 7 yourself. Then we'll unpause and check our answers. Okay, guys. So for 36, you could do 9 times 4. You could do 6 times 6. I did 6 times 6. As I figure that's probably the more common one. Then I can break my 6 up into 3 times 2, which is prime, and 3 times 2, which is prime. The final, um, to finish up, I just put them in order from least to greatest, so 2 times 2 times 3 times 3. 72 was got a little fun. I did 9 times 8, and I broke up my 9 to 3 times 3, which was prime. And then 8, 4 times 2, the 2 was prime, but I had to keep going with the 4. I 
out of habit circle before first, so be careful, but four breaks up into two times two. So to write your final answer, you have three twos, so two times two times two times three times three is your answer. And then the 540 was even more fun. So again, if there is a big number with a zero at the end, break it up into 10, 10 times that number. So 54 times 10, I broke up my 54 into nine times six, I broke up my nine to three times three, which was prime, so I circled it. And then six was three times two, so I circled those. And then 10, I broke up into five times two, which was prime. To finish up, we write it in order from least to greatest. So I have two twos, two times two, then three threes, three times three times three times five. And that's my final answer. Okay, guys, you can try these problem solving ones if you'd like, because this is all the same type of problem, even though it's a word problem. Um, this is super fun. So enjoy your homework and um, yeah, have fun.